Okay, so here we are. <laughs> I lied. I'm not gonna snap down these rivets and I'm not gonna use the button stud. This is a great opportunity for improvisation. And one of the things I really like about these button stud designs is they're super fun. You can just push them on, right? And you get a nice fitting. But one of the interesting things is the stud spike, this little guy right here, so cute works too, okay? And for the aesthetic that I'm going for, which is a little more pokey, I think it's appropriate. So what I'm going to do is instead of using the button stud, I'm gonna unscrew that and the rivets, okay? And I'm going to replace them with the spike studs. But before we do that, we need to talk about how these little things work. So you've got spike studs, right? There's a little spike and then there's a barb and the barb component, come on. The barb component has to seat into the spike component. So you need those to come together fairly closely. And then you have a tool and it's not like your standard rivet header. It's actually got a conical cutout in it. So it seats that rivet spike without marring the surface. It keeps it nice and polished and conical. And then you have your standard anvil base, right, to receive the barbed set for your part. So first things first, you've got to poke that through. And these are slightly bigger than this, the button screw. So I'm just going to seat that and we're going to press down our barb. And then we're going to use our header and just <laughs> and we want to make sure that it's not loose. Okay. That there's no gap. So if you look close, we still have a little gap, which means that we need to have more support. The anvil is not enough. We want to get it closer. We also need to hit it a little harder. Okay. So there we go. There's our little stud. this through the sleeve first. And the spike goes on a little easier. It's a nice little aesthetic touch. So you can choose to keep the rivets or you can choose to swap those out for spikes. It's entirely your call. There we go. One brass piece. The other brass piece. And then just make sure that when you lined it up on center, that it's still the way you remember, because you may find that one side looks better if you rotate it 180 degrees. So it's always good to check your assembly and make sure nothing got switched around, nothing looks weird. It's exactly as you remember. But these improvisational opportunities, these chances to do cool stuff, always require you to take the time and check and say, is this how I remember it looking? Is this what I was imagining? Is this how I think this should look? Was this my final goal? How far do I want to take my design? What am I trying to accomplish? What is this art piece saying? Okay, so now we can take our other two, take a look, say, does that look right? Does that look right? I'd say that looks right. So then you get to take it all apart again. And that's, uh, you know, the nature of doing anything new. You got to put together, you got to take it apart, you got to do it several times until you get it right. 
And then when you're finally certain that it's exactly as you want it to be, you get the chance to make something new and exciting. Okay. So again, we're going to take our little spike header, put it on the rivet. Let's seat it down nicely. Take our spike rivet, put our header. Okay, so just making sure everything's nice and tight. Give each one a couple more set blows just because I've got it here to do so. And get that anvil under there. So that covers how to seat all of your rivets blind in a pouch, which is the worst way to do it. Ideally, you would just do this all in flat and then stitch it on, but we wanted to show a couple of different examples of how you can get away with this design. So. Here we are. With our final part. And yes, we can just trim off these side parts. Okay. Straight up scissors. You get the idea.